that good shepherd is our stewardship Sunday, and then we also have a, a lot more going on with an adult baptism and a couple of confirmations this morning as well, so we are very blessed as we get together today. If you are a guest or a visitor, we welcome you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray that uh, he will uh, guide your worship today, and thank you for being with us this morning. Uh, I'm going to address the uh, members of uh, Good Shepherd this morning, this being our Stewardship Sunday. Uh, last week, uh, if you were here, you would have uh, picked up your Stewardship envelope. If you were not here and you need an envelope, would you uh, please raise your hand and uh, our ushers will get you one. So, uh, Brian Dirk's there, keep your hands up, he'll uh, uh, get you an envelope up here, Brian, to the back. And as Brian hands those out again, uh, please fill those out. And uh, if you want them back next year, uh, put your name on them. And when you come up for communion, we will put them in the basket. And then uh, they sit up on uh, the altar uh, throughout the year, okay? Does anyone have any questions about that? And does anyone else need one? Thank you, Brian. All right, we will follow our printed order of worship then for this morning. Our opening hymn, 846, Your Hand, O Lord, in days of old, will stand on the third and final verse. <laughs> God, 
We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and to serve Him as His dear children. But we have disobeyed Him and deserve only His wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to Him and plead for His mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear children. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Let us join together in the prayer of the day. We pray. Lord, our fellowship of the gospel includes all that we do, say, live, and give. As stewards, we strive to reflect the will of the Father, who desires all men to come to the knowledge of the truth and be saved. Guide us in this task as baptized stewards, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for the 25th Sunday after Pentecost is found in 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 8 through 16, and is printed on the back of your worship folder. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, Arise and go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a sit a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, as the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. And now I gather, now I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear, go and do as you have said. But first make me a little cake of it, and bring it to me, and afterwards make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, The jar of flour shall not be spent, and the jug of oil shall not be emptied, until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did as Elijah said. And she and he and her household ate for many days. The jar of flour was never spent, neither did the jug of oil become empty, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle lesson for this Stewardship Sunday is printed for you on page number two. It will be from 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 through 8a. We are going to read these verses together, and they will serve as our sermon text for this morning. We read from 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 
This is how one should regard us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required of stewards that they be found faithful. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by any human court. In fact, I do not even judge myself, for I am not aware of anything against myself, but I am not thereby acquitted. It is the Lord who judges me. Therefore, do not pronounce judgment before the time, before the Lord comes, who will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Then each one will receive his commendation from God. I have applied all these things to myself and Apollos for your benefit, brothers, that you may learn by us not to go beyond what is written, that none of you may be puffed up in favor of one against another. For who sees anything different in you? What do you have that you did not receive? If then you receive it, why do you boast as if you did not receive it? Already you have all you want. Already you have become rich. This is the word of the Lord. Will you please rise for the Holy Gospel? Our Holy Gospel lesson, which is printed on the back of your worship folder, is in the Gospel of St. Mark, verses, <coughs> chapter 12, verses 38 through 44. In his teaching, Jesus said, Beware of the scribes, who like to walk around in long robes and like greetings in the marketplaces, and have the best seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at feasts who devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayers, they will receive the greater condemnation. And he sat down opposite the treasury and watched the people putting money into the offering box. Many rich people put in large sums, and a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins which make a penny. And he called his disciples to him and said to them, Truly I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the offering box. For they all contributed out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. With our new members, Please come forward at this time. As they make their way up here, I encourage the congregation to turn to page 268 in the front portion of your hymnal. There you can follow along with the baptism. After the baptism, we will have the confirmations, and that will be on page 272. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, you guys are the congregation part, so. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And in the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, Baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful, and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. I now ask you, how are you named? 
Shaylin, Elise Barker, receive the sign of the Holy Cross, both upon your forehead and upon your heart, to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the Crucified. We will now skip over and we will say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Shaylin Elise Barker, do you desire to be baptized? Shaylin Elise Barker, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shaylin, as you have now just been baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit into the Lord's Church, I'm going to give you this a candle as a reminder of this day of your baptism, November 10th, 2024. I encourage you to, uh, in the future years, get this out on November 10th uh, as a reminder that the light of Christ burns in your heart, and may the Lord continue to be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you have graciously preserved and enlarged your family, and have granted Shaylin the new birth and holy baptism, and made her a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as she has now become your child, you would keep her in her baptismal grace according to your good pleasure that she may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name, and finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I now encourage you to turn to page 272. There we will have our confirmation for both Shaylin and for Michael. Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostle, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always to the end of the age. You have been baptized and catechized in the Christian faith according to our Lord's bidding. Jesus said, Whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you this day in the presence of God and of this congregation acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? Do you renounce the devil? Do you renounce all his works? Do you renounce all his ways? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life eternal. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? 
Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? Do you confess the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, drawn from the scriptures as you have learned to know it from the small catechism to be faithful and true? Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession in church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? We rejoice with thankful hearts that you have been baptized and received the teaching of the Lord. You have confessed the faith and been absolved of your sins. As you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his blessed sacrament, he who has begun this good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Shay Lynn, Elise Barker, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. I go Alex, the Lord, Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing this, your Son and daughter, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that bringing forth the fruits of faith, they may continue steadfast and victorious to the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Shay Lynn, officially welcome. Great to have you as part of our fellowship here at Good Shepherd. Michael, same thing. Great to have you as part of our fellowship. You guys are great in adult class, very curious about everything. Hopefully we learned a lot together. And may your faith continue to grow in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be with you both. Amen. Will you please rise for our confession of faith? This morning on the Stewardship Sunday, our confession of faith is going to be the first article and meaning from Luther's small catechism. We say together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. What does this mean? I believe that God has made me and all creatures that he has given me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my reason and all my senses, and still takes care of them. He also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, animals, and all I have. He richly and daily provides me with all that I need to support this body and life. He defends me against all danger and guards and protects me from all evil. All this he does only out of fatherly, divine goodness and mercy, without any merit or worthiness in me. For all this it is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. Please be seated.
Jesus died so we might live. Amen. Text will serve as base. Our message for this morning is our epistle lesson. Paul's letter to the church in Corinth, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 through 8a. Dear friends in Christ, stewardship is a constant struggle. As human beings made in the image of God, we are to be stewards of everything God has made. The first stewards failed. Do you remember the great stewardship crisis of Genesis 3? Adam and Eve did not defend perfection from the serpent, but their stewardship was not terminated. Our Creator restored the role of steward. He did this by sending His perfect Son. This Son, Jesus, never failed to steward the Word and will of His Father. He paid the price for our failure. We now strive to reflect the will of the Father who desires that all men be saved, come to a knowledge of the truth. There are dangers. We are saint sinner at the same time. Too often we reflect our will rather than the Lord's will. Our flesh can fall before the devil's schemes. So let's be on the lookout for stewardship Self-sabotage. So where to begin this morning? Where can the devil start to creep into our hearts and minds with cunning and craftiness? When we focus in on what we don't have, not enough time, I need more money, I don't have that skill. But we come to the Lord's church with everything. Word and sacrament ministry, look at what we do possess. Wow. Comparison. Comparison is the thief of joy. When we start to, to compare ourselves to individuals, or to other churches, or to those around us, the devil will always make sure that it appears we are lacking. But this is false. Look at our text. Moreover, it is required of stewards that they be found trustworthy. Things out of our control. Believe me, I get this one. How about you? We can't control how the message of the gospel is received. The steward is called to be faithful to what is entrusted to him. We give and we serve and we trust because we know the Lord is at work. We don't control the results. I learn that every day. How about you? Discouragement. News media and social media want to airbrush the message of perfection. But this is the devil's ongoing work. He loves it when we suffer discouragement or discontentment. And this self-sabotage gets us asking, did God really say? We get distracted. The cares and concerns of this world put us sometimes in a mental fog. We lose our way with nostalgia or the good old days. But stewardship happens in the here and the now. May the Holy Spirit help us to remain focused on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. It all flows from Him. Many of you still remember, because I hear your comments, last year's stewardship message. We had some challenges that I placed before you. And did you respond? We have had a nice 2024. What I see here at work is the hand of the Lord. In 2023, Janet Evans, our office manager, and I were figuring things out. 
especially the last few months of 2023 of our stewardship responsibilities. And so as 2024 approached, what would life throw our way? Well, what we saw was Janet was diagnosed with liver cancer and eventually died. But see, we haven't had to worry about the finances in 2024. Joanne Hart filled the gap. We got all the bills paid. What a blessing. Do not miss what the Lord has done. Therein lies the key. Our text warns us then against being puffed up. I mean, the real Lord must really be blessed to have us as his stewards. But this attitude can sabotage our stewardship. The Lord carries it on in and through us. We are not all that in a bag of chips. You see, repenting of these behaviors is the only answer. Confess daily that we fall short of the glory of God. And then the Lord forgives. And he renews. And he restores us. And having been given this new life in Jesus Christ, we now live that new life with a different perspective. On the whole of our life and all, all the things of this life. And whether we are in the church, at work, in school, at home, in the community, or traveling. God's stewards are God's stewards. We do it all to His glory, as revealed in Holy Scripture. It is a reflection and expression of God's love and grace given us through Christ Jesus. Amen. of the church. The prayers this morning are printed out for us on pages 3 and 4. And then I also have an additional prayer request as well. Gracious God, grant us faith like that of the widow who gave her last two coins, trusting that you would care for her every need. Give us a genuine faith and a heart that gives with joy. Lord, in your mercy, merciful God, your Son came not to be served, but to serve. We pray for the sick, especially remembering this morning Mo Dale dealing with a pain that he would like gone from his body. We pray for the healing those with mental health problems, and those that we now pray for silently. Lord, in your mercy, Lord God, we have parents and grandparents in our midst struggling with time and treasure when it comes to their family. Where there is a real need, grant grace to help. Where their kind heart is being taken advantage of, help them to see that denying the request is the love their child, grandchild needs to stand on their own. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, as we stand on the eve of Veterans Day, May we be thankful for the liberty in our land and those who won it with their sacrifice and death. May we honor their memory with our loyal citizenship and readiness to defend the rights of our nation. Sustain those veterans who are confined to hospitals throughout our land, those who bear the scars of war, 
that they might enjoy peace and healing. May the gospel have free course under the banner of thy cross. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we pray for all those who are elected this past week. As we said last week in our prayer, your will be done. And we pray, Lord, that going forward, everything would be according to your will and purpose. We know, Lord, that there are certain people upset. And that's because as Christians, we live in the two kingdoms, not just an earthly kingdom, but a spiritual kingdom. We pray for our brothers and sisters who live only in the earthly kingdom. They are the prognosticators who are having a hard time. The college people that need their safe places. The Hollywood people that want to leave our country. Let us pray for them. Guide and bless them so that they might be brought to a knowledge of the truth and be saved through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty Father, you have blessed our church with the grace of stewardship of those giving their time, those supplying their talents, and those giving freely of their gifts. Bless us with more of the same as we gather in our voters' meeting this day. Guide our future as you have our past. Lord, in your mercy. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it. In remembrance of me. Before we bring our pledges up here to the Lord's altar, we will pray together the prayer of commitment at the top of page five. We pray together Lord Jesus, you made us yours in baptism. Receive these pledges and offerings as a response to your love and faithfulness. In baptism we count ourselves dead to sin, but alive to God through Christ Jesus. Help us to live the new life in service to you, our living Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
We pray together the post-communion prayer as printed on page 5. Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, grant that we who receive the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life, now and forever. Amen. Please note our closing hymn for this morning is printed in your worship folder. Now may God, who created the world and all that is in it, teach us to live faithfully as stewards of everything around us, and to love one another with an unceasing love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We thank God for everything that uh, continues to go on in our church. Uh, there are a lot of things happening, and uh, I'm going to try to do this in order so I don't forget everything. So with our new members, you can read their bios in the uh, bulletin, and uh, we'll have them in the back of church here uh, momentarily, so you can welcome all of them. And we have one more uh, new member to welcome here in a moment. Uh, a couple of things. Uh, you can see my schedule in the bulletin this week. 
Uh, today is also our seminary offering for uh, seminary and Sam Shelton's. Uh, so the basket is uh, back in the narthex. Also, you can sign up for International Neighbors Night or in. Uh, we are serving a Thanksgiving meal for the uh, international students over at Wittenberg. Uh, that will be this Friday at 6 o'clock. Uh, you can see the sign up uh, back in the narthex. Small group meets tonight and then also we're having our voters meeting today. That will be downstairs in the uh, basement. Uh, we're going to put everything up on the screen again, so if your eyes aren't so good, I encourage you to uh, sit up toward the front so you can see what's going on and, and uh, uh, see everything uh, uh, clearly. Uh, then I just also want to uh, reiterate, all of you should have gotten a thank you this week uh, after Pastor Appreciation last week. Uh, but again, thank you for that. Holden and Tony and I had a great time opening the cards, reading all of them, and uh, seeing all the love and support that you guys have showered upon us over the years. Now I want to take a, a moment to uh, welcome another new member, and that is uh, Sarah Runyon. And Sarah is transferring from uh, Christ Lutheran uh, in Normal. Sarah lives down in Leroy. And uh, we want to welcome you, welcome you, Sarah, to our fellowship. And Sarah and I and uh, Holden played uh, softball together for a little while <laughs> over at Christ. Uh, great to have you as uh, part of Good Shepherd. And uh, I'd like to have you uh, come out. Uh, great people. And if Michael and Shaylin, if you'll uh, join me in the back of the church as well as everybody uh, uh, greets you as they leave today. Does anyone have any other announcements? All right. Lord be with you. Thank you.